Hi. Hello. How are you? I'm doing good. How about you? Good. Um, my name is Charlize, and I am a fourth year animal science major. And I am from Los Altos, California, which is like South Work. San Francisco Bay Area. Mm -hmm. And fun fact about me is that I'm getting ready to graduate and I will be done in spring. That is so fun. <laughs> Thank um, you. Hello, it is. my name is Alexander Torres. You can just call me Alex. I'm a third year studying sociology and international relations. Uh, I hail from the city of San Jose. I'm sure you're familiar. Yes. South Bay. Um, and a little fun fact about me, uh, I'm not binary, so I go by he, him, they, them pronouns. Nice. So. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to start us off with the questions. What are your, we're just going to go right into the big ones. So okay, what are okay. your plans after you graduate? <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, I'm sure you have a more fleshed out plan than me as a fourth year, but I guess my plan. Only barely. <laughs> Only barely. <laughs> <laughs> no, as a, I, I think. My plan as of right now is to, uh, I want to stick with my housing, my housemates that I stick with. And what, what we plan to do is we're going to pick a city. We're going we're gonna to pick a city and we're going to find jobs any in that region. It's because like my major is not very locked in like the kind of like what type of occupation it, it really right. is um, that you can do. So I'm definitely going to play off that flexibility and really yeah. just um, work towards that. Explore but, uh, a little bit. Exactly. I think that's you know, smart. Yeah, building yeah. myself up. But how exactly. about you? Um, I am. I'm actually will be going to vet school in August. Oh so my God. I'll have so exciting. Um, <laughs> thank you. Yes. So I'll have about a month and a half of summer unwind, mm -hmm. relax a little bit, and then get ready to go again for. I mean, the transition to Davis academics was was tricky because we're so good here, and <laughs> I I know that that's going to be the case again when <laughs> I have to do vet school. So. How long do you have to stay in vet school for? It's four years. Okay, fun. Yeah. Sounds so fun. But I'm, I'm excited. I've been working towards it for, for a long time. I it's bet. Been a long time oh my coming. goodness. So, yeah. No, the, the relief I feel is so sweet. So wonderful. I know. You're going to do that commencement. And you're going to be like, next on up. Oh, that's yeah. so fun. <laughs> but I, got, I guess I got the next question for you. So another big hitter. Okay. Um, <laughs> what are you studying and why are you studying that? So essentially like favorite, least favorite things about your major. Okay. Um, I'm studying animal science. And I just, I mean, it's probably pretty clear between that and my career path, but love animals. Mm -hmm. I grew up with all of them, like dogs, cats, hamsters, guinea pigs, birds, horses, like oh, everything under the sun. The animal kingdom. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I loved it. I grew up also riding horses and I'm on, I'm on the equestrian team That is here, so fun. Which was another wonderful thing that I've gotten to be a part of because it was created halfway through my sophomore year. So didn't think I'd get this experience at all in college and I just love the fact that I've been able to do it. It's been amazing. And I think not only do I love animals, but I love everything that they've taught me growing up. I just, I feel like oh. I've learned, I've had so many life lessons about how to you know, translate it to how I communicate with people and That's how I study and so how I succeed and my outlook on life, like mm -hmm. how I perceive situations and, and make them positive, even though I m might not want to in that like quick first reaction to them, you know? Yeah. And I want to be able to provide that for other people. And I love science, so it seems like, seems like a good fit. And that's You're the like, plan. it goes hand in hand. <laughs> it goes hand in hand. Well, wow, that's so, I What love about that. you? Well, so I'm studying um, sociology and international relations. Right. And so within those majors, um, I'm actually the, the other sociology major. So there's two here at UC Davis. We have um, sociology, regular, and then sociology organizational studies. Will you um, tell me? I don't know the difference between them. Yeah, honestly. so uh, the biggest difference is kind of like um, the level of study. So like sociology is definitely more broad, more um, wide range. Organizational studies is, is kind of like how the name entails it. Um, we study like institutions, organizations, and um, the way they work. So my emphasis, um, my emphasis in both majors. So for work studies, I'm nonprofit and social movements. Oh wow! So, yeah, like one of the one like question like one I always tell people an easy way to understand my majors like a big question is like um, how did the civil rights movement arise when it did? Why did it arise when it did? What circumstances and what forces and who allowed it to rise in that moment um, in history? And my other major, international relations, I'm emphasizing in peoples and nationalities. And we get to choose kind of like um, the area we study. So I'm, I study Latin America. So I'm learning Portuguese right now. Oh, wow. So I, I study, I'm, next quarter I'm taking a class on human rights in Latin America, you know, this kind of stuff. 
And so that's kind of like what I've been studying and why I got to study it. It's a long journey. So I knew going to college, I immediately was like, sociology. That's my ish. I need to do that. Um, but my biggest problem was I want to work in the nonprofit sector. I want to do advocacy human rights. And when I was like researching all these things, UC Davis is actually one of the only schools, almost in the entire country, that had a emphasis tailored specifically towards nonprofits. Oh, really? So I was like, that's good. I was like, that's 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 the one. Yeah. Um, and so, and I was like those freshmen that was like so ambitious. I immediately knew I need a double major. <laughs> I'm going to get two degrees out of this here at institution. I'm the absolute most. Um, and I love this. Good for you. <laughs> um, ambitious Alex. I, I was very, very intrigued still by the sciences too. And so I was like, okay, my initial, I was in IR, I was in international relations at first. I was actually human development. Oh, cool. And I was like, you know what? It's a BS without chemistry, <laughs> uh, without calculus. So I was like, you know what? This might work. Yeah. Um, took a bio class. No, it did not work. <laughs> did not work. <laughs> so then I was like, oh, you know what? I need to reevaluate this. So then I decided IR because I felt like it meshed really well with sociology. And so my first, so I took my first sociology course winter quarter 2019. And let me tell you, it was one of the most eye-opening classes I've taken because imagine my whole life, you know, I thinking about things like at, a, at like you know think about race relations thinking about like my own like life thinking about the forces that have allowed me to be where i am today is a whole field and i didn't even know that mm -hmm. it's called sociology so i knew so i walked into sociology and i was like i've been thinking about a soci like a sociologist my entire life and i and and to finally like be able to be in an institution that uplifts that was so wonderful to me yeah so empowering yeah because yeah, sure. especially in san jose i'm sure you know it's the silicon valley it's a tech center it's like so tech uh, so stem focused stem or nothing baby exactly yeah. i was just like well like where where do i fit in this yeah. and so when i was you know when i finally came here i was like this is this is the one this is it and um that inspired that in turn like made me so in love with sociology and so in love with like the my classes you know i took race relations one of my favorite classes i've taken was social movements um and i actually studied like um different movements i studied the uh the hiv aids like um epidemic and i um the act up movement you know the early uh, the late 80s and early 90s mm -hmm. um all these queer people fighting um for you know their place in healthcare. it was it's been my one love here at davis and i think but like my, my, my least favorite thing, and I feel like a lot of sociology undergrads can, can speak on this, is that it's so theory based, it's hard to like see past that, you know, it's, it's hard to apply that theory. It's so mm -hmm. dense, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and old, old, old theory. But it's also, it's, it's very easy to be pessimistic. You know, the thing, the stuff that I study, it's like, oh, all these things, all these oppressed, marginalized people, right, all these yeah. things happen, you know, and, and yeah. it can definitely bog you down, especially as a per queer person of color as myself. Um, it can definitely make you feel terrible. Uh -huh. But you know what? I, I truly believe optimism is a choice. And I choose to be optimistic and choose to keep studying it so I can, you know, fight for a just world. Yeah. Um, and that's like why I studied oh what my I gosh, study. That's so cool. Yeah. And yeah, and I was just like, especially in, 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 in Davis, you know, close to SAC, you know, close to the capital of our state. Yeah. It's very nice to be able to get internships. You know, there's so many resources to act to be an activist and, and advocate. So yeah. yeah. All right, well, I got, another, I got another question for you. Um, what are the professors and teaching assistants like in sociology and in international relations? So yeah, okay, cool. So sociology, I would say it's actually honestly very, it, it's not tight, tight knit, but it's like there, there's, there's um, enough of us where it's like, when you meet another sociology major, like, oh, you. <laughs> we're, we're, we're together in this, you know, like, and especially if they're um, org studies, you know, I, bar I rarely meet people who are, who are sociology organizational studies. So when I do, our minds just like synchronize. And it's funny too, because I, you know, I you being a third year, like I know the staff, I know the faculty now, yeah. and, you know, when I, it's funny because I, you know, looking out, like building your classes, you, you see a professor name, like I know their name. And it's, it's uh, very, very interesting. And all the sociology professors I've had so far, I have not had a bad one. And I, the only, the only um, time I had a rough experience was just like my first class. And I just, you know, it's first class, of course you're gonna have rough yeah, experience. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Otherwise, like, 
the, the sociology staff really cares about what they study and loves teaching. And, and interesting enough, I'm um, flipping it to international relations. So international relations is a, is a multidisciplinary major. So I take classes in history, political science, you know, statistics, you know, all these, all these like fields and blending them into one. There isn't like a IR class. Um, and so the, luckily, the, in my experiences with the faculty and like the wide range of classes I've taken have all been so positive. I mean, mm -hmm. absolutely remarkable. I mean, they make, they're super accessible. They make it, they make it easy to talk to their understanding. Like, Especially in this pandemic, I haven't had um, a professor who's been super tough on the students. Like, my, especially I like I have um, I'm taking I have been taking English class for, for uh, my sociology major, and I'm taking language, so I'm taking Portuguese. Both professors, um, uh, Doc, uh, Sasha Bramsky and Professor Eugenia, amazing. I mean, I just like I'm so thankful to have them especially during lockdown, especially during virtual learning, they have made this process a lot easier and like a lot more humanizing. So yeah, it's been, it's been a fun ride and I can't wait to experience like the rest of the quarters I have with the department. But yeah. what about yourself? What about animal science? Animal science is amazing. I could go on and on forever. Okay. <laughs> yeah, they, I mean, I don't remember ranking wise like what what the program is here compared to other schools but it's just mm -hmm. phenomenal it's it's up there somewhere I know it is and you can tell from all the classes and the advising center yeah. um, the advising staff and the professors and TAs I will say obviously the teaching staff incredible but the advising too is really top-notch and what I've loved mm -hmm. about animal science that I get part. I get so much guidance um, which I need because it's kind of it's a you know it's a bigger major we draw a lot of kids here for for the vet school and, and mm. for that purpose so it's but it's wonderful um, Dr. McLean is teaches a couple most of the the equine upper division classes mm -hmm. that I've taken for my equine specialization because um, I just love horses just total horse girl and <laughs> She's a high school, whatever. And she's been she's been amazing. I've been able to do research with her. I've been able to um, ask her to write me a letter of recommendation for vet school. Mm -hmm. um, shout out to Dr. Hovey. He's great. Dr. De Peters. Um, they're amazing. And uh, yeah, I they really care, um, and they explain things wonderfully, which is a bonus. You don't realize how you'd think it would be a given, but when you get it to when you get these really tricky concepts explained to you so well you're like yeah i need that yeah <laughs> i did yeah like definitely the, prof the 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 faculty make the, de the department make them make my major i, I you know my yeah. major just that much more yeah absolutely I mean, you know, and i will say too from the animal science um professors they have been very understanding with the pandemic and oh, everyone adjusting yeah. and being in such an individualized situation. Mm -hmm. Everyone's situation looks a little different right now. Yeah. And uh, I mean, they are not the m most uh, tech savvy group as a whole sometimes, I would mm -hmm. say, but they have just, the effort is there, like yeah, effort. They're, they're, they're trying. trying. And they that, are trying so yeah. hard. And the communication is constant and they, they want you to know that. Like they yeah. want you to reach out and talk to them and, <laughs> and you know, update them on what's going on in our lives and where we need help and, and stuff like that. So I'm super appreciative of that. Yeah, like I'm like Dr. O, if you if you're watching, um, <laughs> he like I didn't show up to uh, a discussion, you know, because of like personal circumstance and he they, they reached out to me and they're like, I noticed you weren't there. Like, you know, like, uh, is there anything uh, happening? Like, uh, let me know. And I was like, man, they have my back, you know, and it, it's really, it was, that was like a really heartwarming moment. And that happened this quarter. So it was really, really nice um, to have that. So, yeah, I totally yeah. agree. But all right, I guess your turn. Yeah. Huh? Your turn. yeah, my turn. I got, <laughs> I got a question for you. And so um, what are some tips on transitioning from high school to college academics? Um, what's changed for you over your years at Davis? Oh, yeah, that was a hard adjustment for me, for mm -hmm. sure. I won't lie. I mean, my freshman grades are, are my worst if you look at the transcript oh. over the past couple of years. I, think I can, I can. Yeah, resonate. I think it's a common trend. Yeah. <laughs> um, some tips for adjusting to academics. I would say, I would say find, you know, make friends in your classes. 
find a good group that you can study with. Um, ask all your questions because mm -hmm. it's obviously it's it's going to be a little awkward and you know we're in big lecture halls not everyone wants to raise their hand and ask that question but the more you're doing it the, the easier it, mm -hmm. it becomes to you the more natural it becomes and there's no stupid questions because all of us are here trying to understand our majors that we may not have had the most experience with before so per. i would mm -hmm. say that and and just and also i would say be patient with yourself because it, it's just going to be difficult to to adjust to the different academics and mm -hmm. what you're expected to do and thinking critically in different ways that you're not used to. And you're not dumb if you're not succeeding right off the bat and you'll figure it out and you're going you're gonna to try lots of different study habits because different things are going to work for different people and just be patient with yourself and remind yourself that you got in for a reason and you're gonna get it eventually and you just need to keep trying different things, seeing what sticks, keep going with the things that stick, and yeah. <laughs> I resonate entirely. You know, I, it's just like, uh, especially like it's very easy to compare. I think one, one of the biggest, hardest things is like, you know, realizing that everyone has their own academic journey to go through, right? Like. Another yeah. person's success isn't your failure. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, yeah. it's a lot like you, you have to go on that journey academically yeah. with yourself and yeah. be okay. That's with... a personal struggle I still have. I'll yeah. say it. Yeah. Me too, girlfriend. <laughs> I, ugh. but like, you know, like, and it's, it's okay to ask for help. It's okay, yeah, you know. Absolutely. And I feel like the, the, the cliche response is always like go to office hours, do this, but it's also like you have to find the courage within yourself to go to office hours. You know, you have to find, um, I'm drive. still nervous to go to office hours. It, yeah, exactly, I'm me too. And I'm still you know? nervous to go. Yeah, but like you gotta. Just, yeah, it's just you have to be able to, you know, I don't want to say get over yourself, but like let go of that like that ego ego yeah. part of yourself and like you know yeah. learn you be yeah. be humble and you know like it's it's okay to get that your first like see it's okay to like fail class you know you can yeah. get back up you can continue it's moving not forward. The end of the world. It is not like it. it yeah. And maybe it's not talked about a whole lot, but it's not, it's, you know, yeah. it happens. So many people bounce back all the time, you yeah. know, and, and that's, that's the remarkable part about being an undergrad and about going to college. It's like not just about succeeding all the time. It's also about, you know, having that misstep yeah. or having multiple missteps. However, not if you fail when yeah. you fail. Yeah, yeah exactly. Absolutely. Like everyone has their own timing or their own journey to experience and you know like don't compare your journey to someone else's because they're not you they're mm -hmm. not you know like i feel like especially like in class like when you're in big lecture halls and someone gets that better grade like you know that's not that that's not on anyone you know that's not on you that's not on them like that's just you know how the cookie crumbles you just gotta keep moving forward yeah. you know like it's it's very 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 easy to compare yourself i think that's like problem like yes the academics was hard like you know, transition high school to college, but I think it it was a lot harder because you're 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 gonna constantly be in such large spaces sometimes that you're gonna compare yourself, and, th and like I don't know about you, but like especially that feature on campus where you can look on your like the average and then the high and the low, I feel like that's like such an unspoken thing. Everyone looks at it. Yeah. Everyone looks at it to see if they're the, if they're above average, below average, hit the high, hit that low, but it's just like that comparison is just not healthy. Yeah. You know, it's like. Like, if anything, it should be based upon your own average, your own high, your own lows. Yeah, right? absolutely. So, yeah. yeah. All right. This is my last, my last one. What are some of the academic resources that you find most helpful? The tutoring, Acad office hours, Academic like resources. That. Hmm. I think, particular like, library, librarians. Oh, honestly, librarians are so helpful. I don't think a lot of people really use them a lot. Yeah, yeah. When I say because like like there there are expertise in their field, and so I remember I was doing this research project. So I did a research project um, last year in one of my political science classes, and I did about like mixed um, race ethnicities and like their experiences. And this librarian helped me find so much material on on that topic, which I didn't think would be helpful. So it was really, really, they're very, very helpful. Um, I think they're very underutilized, very underappreciated. Um, you know, they don't, they don't stow away in that library for nothing. They're doing work all the time and they're ready to help a student. Um, and I guess another academic resource is definitely 
Well, uh, the, the writing center. Like, especially for me, I write lots of papers, write lots of things. They're able to get, you know, get you back, uh, give you really good feedback really quickly. Um, and it's super, super helpful to have that third opinion, fourth opinion, fifth opinion, yeah. however number of opinions you want and need. Because yeah. it's all going to make sense to you, but it doesn't yeah, make sense to exactly. whoever's going to read exactly. it. Exactly. Like, yeah. you can read it and be like, that's I my biggest thing. With, I don't write a whole lot anymore, yeah. but when I do, I'm like, oh yeah, I know exactly what I'm saying. This makes yeah. sense. And then someone reads it and they're like, I have no idea what you're, you're just even like, talking about. Yeah. And you're like, just like, <laughs> where'd you get that? Where'd you, where did you interpret that? And you read it again, you're like, oh, <laughs> okay, I can see. I can see where you're coming from, uh -huh. but I don't see it. <laughs> but yeah. like, you know, it's, it's very that. So I think those, those two especially were very, very, very helpful. Uh, but what about... Science. I would say classes? I agree with both of yours. I would also mm -hmm. add, um, so I get individual tutoring for being an athlete here, and I oh, work. Okay, cool. Yeah, and I that has been a huge help. I love that, and the the tutors that we get assigned also do like the drop in tutoring and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I did drop in tutor because I the team was created like halfway through my sophomore year, mm -hmm. so I used a lot of the drop in tutoring and just the tutoring centers. Um, my freshman and half my sophomore year and all the tutors I would say are amazing all the mm -hmm. the peer tutors are great and I would definitely utilize them ask your questions you can go on your own time you know it's not like oh I can't can't make it to my professor's office hours that's fine you can you know tutoring's just there like you go when you need it when exactly. it works for you you get it mm -hmm. done um, and then I would also say um, relying on like people in, in your classes. I think that is definitely what I have used. I sit down in lecture hall, I'm like, hello, my name's Alex, hello. What are your numbers? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you know, like literally. You, being able to get like network and get, get those, get people. And they, yeah. be, they could become some of your best friendships too, mm -hmm. so. I definitely study in groups the best, study, work with others and just, so you can, you know, you can go to them and, and they can quickly explain to you what's going on. You don't have to, you know, taking the class at the same time. They know where you're at. They know what was talked about last lecture. And if you go to them and you say, I have no idea what's going on. Exactly. I have no idea what they just talked about. Then they're yeah. like, oh my gosh, no worries. This is what they said. This is what yeah. it means. So I think that's also huge, I would say. Yeah. Oh my God. hundred percent agree. There, even now, like I, you know, even in in Zoom Zoom lecture, I just like I I like pick people. I look in the in the participant list. I look at the the cameras. Oh yeah, like, I look you. at the participant list. And then it, any familiar names, I'm I text and I'm like, oh hi, I saw you that you're in this class. Exactly. Blah, 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 You'll blah. play off those relate. You're like, hi, like yeah. how are you doing? You're doing great. <laughs> good. Here's good. my number. And then you know you good. start texting away so, and just helpful. Good. So do you want to study for the quiz next week? Too? <laughs> yeah. You're like, um, how are you? I just shared my essay with you. Yeah, so please literally. look it over. You know, like like being subliminal, but not so subliminal. Yeah. So yeah, I definitely agree. You, people are such good, re like peers are such good resources. So, but yeah, and I guess I have my last question for you. Um, have you had an internship um, or participated in research? Yeah, I've been able to do both over the past four years. Mm -hmm. um, definitely something that yeah need and is highly encouraged for, for pre-vet track. Um, and I have been, what I love is I've been able to get so many different of those experiences with different animals, mm -hmm. um, which I noticed when I was, when I was writing my vet, vet school apps, because I was like, oh yeah. And then I did, I did this job with, with monkeys at the primate center. And then I did this internship with, with rabbits in a lab. And then I did this at the sheep barn. And then I did this at the, you know, and it just goes on and on all the different animals, which is fun. But I've definitely used some Davis connections to help me get those. Um, one internship I got from a girl on the equestrian team, like an, an uh, older upperclassman at the time. So that was great. Um, and then research, definitely, I would say, I feel like a, a lot of people come in and they don't have the best they just don't have the, the excitement about research, but yeah, I, I mm -hmm. you know, but I, it's so great to get involved in and it's really important. And what I did and I would recommend it was we had a guest lecture for one of our animal science classes mm -hmm. and the professor just completely like knocked my socks off. I was like, you are the coolest person. That was the coolest lecture. And uh, 
I emailed them right after and I was like, I absolutely loved you talking to our class today. What research opportunities do you have in the near future? Because I would not really, but I was like, I'll cut my And I would have opened, you knocked my socks off. <laughs> you knocked my socks off. Yeah. I need your, your, your. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So just, and just putting yourself out there that way. Mm -hmm. Because also at Davis, there's so many research opportunities. Oh. Ton. I mean, they flex that a lot, but it's because it's true. Like, there's yeah. so many opportunities for everyone to get that. They're, they're flooding my emails as we speak. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's something that you really got to take advantage of here, I would say. Yeah, I agree. And, um, you know, for, for especially for me, you know, research isn't all test tubes, the chemistry lab mixing stuff together, you know, or like, you know, take, taking the DNA things. It's also like history, it's culture, it's language. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I partic you know, I participated in, in a research my second year. Um, I worked with uh, this grad student and their project was on like the, the identity of, of, tr of being transgender and how that has changed um, across time and, and space um, in three different categories, mm -hmm. like medical, um, like a historical and I, I can't remember the third one but I helped with oh, I did pop culture and I helped in the pop culture realm so I like would look up articles and you know it's it was so fascinating doing this kind of research because you, you're diving deep like with the material directly of like I'm um, seeing live like these changes and researching and working with this grad student and, you're, and it, I honestly found it rewarding to be helping someone with their project as well you yeah, know, like I'm getting I'm getting the experience out of it. They're getting their project. They're getting out of it. the help. Like that they you know, need. it's, it's yeah. such a collaborative spirit, and and it's something that I really enjoy participating in. Yeah. Um, it's it's really fun. I and agree. and there's all kinds of research, in, especially in sociology. Um, you know, there was one where it's like I uh, interviewing black mothers and their their perspective on the American dream. There was like this Hollywood closet project and understanding the closet in, in Hollywood and in, in media. Um, and so there's there's so many different types of research and so many different types of ways you can pursue it. Um, and I definitely encourage like even people in my field to really have fun with it. I mean, because yeah. it's, it's, it's fascinating to say none the least to be able to be a part of that. Mm -hmm. um, and there's research for every anything you could think of yeah. across all fields. It's there. And if you're if you're a student watching, Undergraduate Research Center, yep. great resource. Yep, they absolutely. they are a great resource to be able to coordinate stuff, you know, all that kind of. And and I mentioned before, like in my political science class, like even like I did a research project, and that was like so fun in itself, just because like we were able to get our posters printed through the Undergraduate Research Center. I did this whole thing about um, you know mixed mixed race identities and like um, like the development of mixed like you know, individuals and how they, they go through it and, you know, the dissonance, racial imposter syndrome, all these things. And I've never known any of that if I mm -hmm. didn't do research, you know, and, yeah. and it was so, so fun. And, and, and it improved my activism, it improved the way I advocate. Yeah. And, and, you know, cause like I'm the mixed heritage community coordinator at the Cross Cultural Center. So it has shaped like the way that I do things yeah. now. And you wouldn't think research does, yeah. but it does. And I would say also, it's so fun to be a part of something where that's like new and up and coming. Like I feel oh. like in, in your classes, mm -hmm. you learn things and that are, you know, that we are, discovered this 20 yeah. years ago. We discovered that there's, we discovered this hundreds of years yeah. ago when you're okay, learning Gregory it. Mendel, but like, to be um, at the front of something and you get, you know, you're doing your thing and you're like, hey, someone's gonna learn about this one day and that's gonna be cool. That's really cool. Yeah. No, yeah, that's a really fun, fun thing. But yeah. internship wise too, um, I'm currently applying for internships. So, you know, if you're out there, you have my application, think <laughs> twice. Uh, but I've, I've been offering one actually my freshman year. I did a first year seminar. Um, it was about scholarly activism. So empowering academics to be used towards activism. Um, and it was the, uh, the, pres the director of one of the non nonprofits was teaching this course. It was a first year seminar. And she was like, oh, my God, your work is so good. Like, you know, like, you want to be a part of it? And I was a first year. I was a little, you know, I, was, I wasn't aware of what I was doing. She's like, I was like, no, I'd like, I, I need to reevaluate what I need to do. But um, just like that connection alone, like just being in the course and being actively participating with the professor, um, Dr. Vesha Watson, if you're watching you, love you. Um, but they were amazing. And, it, and, it, and see, being able to have that kind of relationship with the professor and like having these, you know, having internship opportunities in places you didn't think you would be able to, but because of the connections you make, you, you do. Yeah. So yeah, that's about my experiences with that. Awesome. Well, I think, I think that's it. 
it. Yeah, I think that's it. So yeah, it was nice talking to you. Nice talking to you too. <laughs>